Hey everyone, Chris here, and today we're going to start a new series where we take an introductory trip through OpenCV, which is a uh, computer vision library along with MGU, which is a C Sharp wrapper for OpenCV. Uh, I'm going to take you through those and we're going to uh, kind of get the basics going. Um, I've toyed with these libraries in the past uh, quite a bit, and uh, to be honest, they're super fun, they're very easy to use. And once you get through the basics, you can do some pretty um, impressive stuff. Um, and so I wanted to make an introductory series to kind of get you guys up to speed with it. And so you can start having that fun too. Um, so let's dig in. Okay, so the first thing to really get going with this is to install the packages. Um, so like I said, we have OpenCV, which is the general library. Um, it's it's open source and also it is available um, as essentially like a DLL and you can use it in pretty much any language. Most languages have wrappers written for them, um, and in our case, we're gonna since we're in C sharp, we're gonna be using a wrapper called Emgu, E M G U. Uh, there's a there's a few others I believe as well, but I just always use Emgu. Um, and when we download and install Emgu, uh, that actually takes care of the OpenCV installation. Um, for the most part, there might be one instance where we want to download it later, but we'll look at that. Um, so basically we just need to install Imgu. Now the way we install Imgu, uh, is through Nougat. Obviously if you, if you've used C Sharp before, you've probably used Nougat. It's a package manager for C Sharp. Um, if you're using Visual Studio, this is going to look a little different, but for me, since I'm using VS Code, um, I just have to run the .NET command. So dot net I believe it's add package imgu.cv yeah okay so that added imgu.cv there's actually another one we want to do as well um, it is the windows runtime for imgu cv so that that just added those to my cs project file um, so now we have those available to use Again, if you're using Visual Studio, uh, you know, not code, um, it's going to look a little different. You'll just go into NuGet uh, in, in Visual Studio, you know, right click your dependencies, manage NuGet packages, and then uh, do browse and search for Imgu. And like I said, you want to you want to install Imgu, and then you also want to install the Windows runtime as well. Both are necessary. OK, so now we've got our project set up. Um, just to double check, we can just build this real quick, make sure things are running. You know, always suggest doing that, even on the most basic Hello World program, just to make sure you got it going. So we've got Hello World there, all set. All right, so now let's go ahead and add imgu.cv. So that again pulls in imgu into our project. Um, we don't need to do anything complicated here. We're just going to stay inside main. Um, and we're going to start with the mat structure. So what a mat is, it's a matrix. Um, if you're familiar with how images are stored, uh, or represented in memory, there's different kinds. Um, but in terms of when we're discussing this with OpenCV, in general, uh, you're going to see a lot of these mat structures. You're going to see a lot of uh, a um, class called image, which has two, it's a tuple set, two sets of uh, types. And uh, that's, that's how we're going to represent uh, an image basically in OpenCV is with this mat, this matrix. And that keeps, um, it keeps data on the colors of the, each pixel in the image. Um, it keeps, depth type, it keeps all this, this other stuff. So that's kind of the core structure of OpenCV is mat. Uh, if you look at older versions of OpenCV, it's it's other stuff. Um, but I think anything, I wanna say after like three, it's mostly mats. Um, so, okay, we've got a mat. Um, and to double check, let's just make sure we build and it knows where everything's at. Um, okay, exit code zero, great. So, well, what do we do with a mat? Well, um, probably the first thing to do is to 
um, read in an image to populate it. Uh, you can populate it a bunch of different ways. Um, so we're going to be doing a method called I'm read and uh, it'll take a file name and it will return. Okay, so we need a file name. All right, so the, the file I'll be working with in this uh, course here, I just downloaded Starry Night, the uh, Van Gogh, because I think it looks cool. And also, um, it's uh, it's useful for showing a lot of stuff um, in terms of things you can do to images, you know, that, that sort of thing. So um, what we'll do is we'll pull that in. So I'm going to make a... Um, a directory called image and then I'm going to copy this image in um, I will provide uh, this source code and I'll try to make sure and put the Starnet JPEG in there as well on the repository so if you need the image as well you can find it online too I mean it's whatever I, I think I got it from like one of the museum websites or something and just saved it um, jokes on them now I have priceless art so uh, you know I'm making NFT. Um, so I've got Starry Night here. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to read that in. Uh, I believe it's, yeah, Starry Night at JPEG. Okay. I believe this is the correct file. So you got to be careful sometimes with reading and stuff when you're using um, relative namings. I believe this is the correct file structure. Um, but We'll run it. We'll see. May have to adjust, but that's okay. Um, okay, so we've got pig in our. We've got our mat named pig, and we are going to use this CV invoke class using its function called I'm read, and then we're going to read in an image and store it in our pick mat. So, um, okay, we've got that there. Cool. That's great. So let's display it back out. Right. Um, all this does is store it in our uh, object, but we need to show it right so what we can do there is another CV invoke method this one's called I'm show uh, so there's two arguments as you can see from my little pop up here there's two arguments uh, the name of the uh, essentially will be the window it displays in and then our image of type I input array Matt is of type I input array so I'm gonna call this one starry night and then I'm going to pass it pick Okay, um, so there's one more thing we need to do. So this code would display the image, but the problem is um, as soon as it's completed, it's going to exit the program. And on exit for these OpenCV type libraries, uh, one big part of what they do is they destroy the windows because to free up the memory and such. Um, so if I run this, in fact, I'll just do that right now. It's going to display and it disappears instantly. <laughs> so, um, not very helpful. So we, we do want, in fact, to see, um, we want to see the images. So what we're going to do is we're going to tell it to wait on us to press a button, you know, sort of like you do in the, in a console application for a terminal. So, okay. Uh, so we've added wait key. Now we just need to run it. So we can see the image. All right. So I presume, yep. All right. So that is coming through on the recording. I just want to make sure because I'm recording the uh, the actual application itself. So anyways. Um, all right. So we have a beautiful image of Starry Night, which is uh, looks great. We see our title here. We gave it Starry Night. It's up here at this top window. Good to go. OK. So now we can press any key. I'm going to just press Escape, and it will exit. It was just waiting on us to press a key. OK. Now that we have the ability to uh, read in an image, save it to a mat, uh, show the image back out, that's that's quite a bit done there. Um, so now I want to show a quick example of, um, I guess, what you might call image processing or image manipulation. Um, we're going to have, uh, I think in the next video, there's going to be a lot more information about this kind of stuff. We're going to show a lot, a lot more different things you can do. Uh, but for right now, I just want to show a quick example of uh, what's known as a Gaussian blur and a Gaussian blur is essentially a uh, image processing technique 
that you can do that it takes what's called a um, convolution kernel and it applies that um, it's what it is a, a x by x matrix it applies that matrix of values to each pixel in the uh, image and based on you know some extreme math that was figured out a long time ago you can essentially uh, do what to the human eye at the end of it looks like a blur effect um, so we're gonna try that real quick um, basically let's move all this down um, so we've got our pick and uh, what we want to do is create a new mat um, we'll call this one Gaussian blur and um, we're just playing a mat doesn't really matter um, and then uh, what we're going to do is a, another CV invoke. Um, so you, obviously, you can tell a lot of CV invoke uh, methods in this this early stuff. Um, you can do a lot of things with it. I mean, you can scroll through here and see there's a there's a lot of things. Basically, these are all these kind of built-in OpenCV functions. There's a lot more than this. There's tons of other classes you can uh, utilize as well. This is kind of just the static stuff. Um, and what we're going to do is the Gaussian blur. Now the Gaussian Blur has a few um, inputs and the first one here is the source so it's going to be your uh, picture, your the, the input essentially to the, the algorithm and in our case we're going to do pick. The second uh, argument is the output array. Uh, you'll find in a lot of these OpenCV static method calls uh, you'll pass the actual um, the argument that's going to be populated instead of returning it, you know, by reference type thing. Um, and uh, in our case, that's going to be the Gaussian blur. And then it's going to take the size. Um, so it is in, uh, it's an object of type system dot drawing called size. So we're going to, we're going to do that. And this will determine the output image size. Um, in our case, we just want to get the size, we just want it to be the same size. You could use this to resize as well. And so the way we're going to do that is we're going to access the pick size. And the easiest way to do that is um, using its values pick.rows and pick.column. Um, it's important to note that uh, I think in a lot of CV libraries and image processing stuff, uh, this might actually be backwards. I, I read that somewhere in the documents at one point, but um, in our case, OpenCV, the sizes, uh, rows is the, um, it's the width, and columns is the height. Um, and then from here, there's also one more argument we need, and it's called the sigma x in, um, in this, uh, the, the documentation. Uh, essentially, I've also heard it called the, um, uh, like the, uh, what's a good word for it? Um, I forget exactly what they call it on the, the Wikipedia for Gaussian blur, but basically it's, uh, it's kind of how blur do you want it? Um, and these values you're going to see anywhere from one, which is not very much to, or if any, um, to like 10, which uh, will be very blurry. So let's do a significant blur. Let's do a seven. And then, um, yeah, so that's pretty much, uh, there's there's other types uh, for the Gaussian blur. There's other overloaded methods, um, but this is, this is be good enough for our purposes here. So this will then store this blurred image in our Gaussian blur mat. Um, so then we want to show it, right? So um, let me do this blurry night and then um, so we'll do that and yeah let's see if this runs I should mention at this point <laughs> that uh, the Gaussian blur is a very computationally expensive um, algorithm if you're going to do it on an image that has as many pixels as this one. And so it might take your computer a little bit just to get through it. Um, so don't be surprised if it hangs a little bit. Um, okay, so you see two images. We have our blurry night and our starry night. Our starry night is this original picture. Beautiful. Um, blurry night, quite blurry. Uh, this is with a 7. 
um i assume you could give it just such a high number that it just it just evolves to a mess of colors um you know you still see some form here but this is it's fairly blurry um I'll say that the Gaussian blur algorithm is also used to soften edges and things like that. So just a slight blur on an image can make it look, um, you know, kind of uh, smoother, I guess is the word, uh, which can, you know, make it look better depending on what you're wanting. So um, this is just, again, one example of an image processing uh, kind of algorithm you can do using OpenCV on an image. And um, yeah, there's many more where that came from. We're going to cover those more in the next uh, video. Um, but yeah, so for right now, I think that's pretty much where we're going to leave off in this first video. Um, we, you know, we created a mat, which is a, a big thing. It's just one line of code, but it is a very important uh, object in uh, MQ. And then we read in an image. We uh, displayed that image. We learned how to do a Gaussian blur just real quick, just to kind of give an example. And we learned to show them. And obviously we learned this wake key function, which is important. Otherwise you wouldn't be able to see your work. So, um, all right. So that right there is pretty much our quick introduction to MGU and OpenCV. This next video that I'm about to record is going to dive uh, much deeper into image manipulation uh, we're going to discuss image rotation. We're going to discuss how you can change the colors of the image uh, by pixel. And uh, we're even going to build our own uh, convolution kernels uh, to kind of do these interesting algorithms to the images. Um, luckily, a bunch of old guys a long time ago just you know figured out a bunch of that math. And uh, we can take that math and use it and create our own kernels and do um, what the intention of that kernel to the image. Uh, so like, you know, there's a specific, there's specific numbers you can put in your three by three matrix. If you want to do edge detection, for instance, or if you want to do, um, you know, blurs like the Gaussian blur, things like that. So um, pretty cool stuff. So we're going to dive into that in this next video. And um, anyways, Thanks for hanging out. If you don't mind, please like and subscribe, as always. And uh, if you want to see, you know, more programming tutorial content in your inbox, uh, other than that, I will see you in the next one. Thank you very much. Bye.